I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hightower, <laughs> Hooks, Callahan, Tackleberry, Jones, Backler, Harris, and Commandant Lazar. When it comes to in-flight service and on-the-job safety, they're the biggest wheels around. That was very exciting. Police Academy 6, City Under Siege, rated PG. Starts Friday, March 10th at a theater near you. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And if you're wondering what that noise is, it's a fan because it's too damn hot. And I'm not going to boil and melt while doing reviews. To give us ambiance or whatever the hell you want to. As you can tell, I'd rather talk about that than Police Academy 6 City Under Siege. said it before I'll say it again number one this is a patreon review for Johnny thank you so much if anyone wants to request pretty much any type of video you can either join me on my patreon or send a request directly via my PayPal number two I like the first four police Academy films after that I went to shit D as in damn this movie sucks E this movie ain't fucking for everyone. F, fuck this movie. G, again, if you want to request pretty much any type of video, either join me on my Patreon or send a request directly via PayPal. The links are down below in the info box. Now, enough lolly dadding around. You may have noticed I've been talking softer lately in videos. Because when you watch shit like this and... The next one I did too, Mission to Moscow, which that's the worst. You just don't want to kill your fucking voice. You really don't. I was two minutes in. Come on, man, it's not that bad. It's Police Academy 6. You don't have Steve Grunberg, yet again. You don't have Bob Ted Goldthwait, yet again. You have Matt McCoy coming back from the fifth film. And I don't mind Matt McCoy as an actor. But no, he's not Steve Dudenberg. He doesn't work in this. Just like he did not work in part five. I will say between five, six, and seven. Of those three. This is probably the better one. Because the story is trying to have a little bit of a teeny bit of mystery a teeny bit more of a story compared to part 5 in Mission to Moscow where the title says the city's under siege and you have this villain which made me think of fucking Dick Tracy I don't know why you just see the silhouette 
and the voice, I swear it's a guy trying to do his impersonation of Robert England. And a mastermind that's behind all these crimes. And so these thieves, this precinct needs help. So let's get some of the people from police academy to help out. At times, this feels more like G.W. Bailey and Lance Kinsey. The guys who are giving shit to our characters in part four and part five that G.W. Bailey did in the first film. It feels like they did more screen time here than some of the actual Police Academy main characters. Sometimes it feels like it's the G.W. Bailey and you know, him and the Proctor show. I mean, it begins with them having a stakeout looking for crooks. A set of robberies happens. And this crime happens behind them. They don't notice it yet. Or there's a scene later on where they're window washing. They're listening in and all this hijinks. I'm like, this is more of the Harris and Proctor show. And I don't mind them as actors. I don't mind the Harris and Proctor as characters. But not to be in it more than the cadets. They work well, but not as almost, they're this close to being the main fucking focus. That's what it feels like. The other characters, you give Marion, Ramsey, Bacchus, Hooks. We first see her, this asshole's car getting towed, and she just pissed at him. After you pay your citation, boy. Michael Winslow's fucking with a guy with his squeaky shoes that he's making noises out of. Matt McCoy, they really want him to be the Steve Goomberg type of role, where Goomberg's character would be the one to play pranks. Well, Matt McCoy gives G.W. Bailey this exploding die money. Just G.W. Bailey wants to kiss ass, and of course, boom, blows up in the guy's face. He's embarrassed. And it just, it just wasn't that funny. And this comes from a guy that likes the first four films. It just wasn't that funny. A lot of the people, whether it be Brian Tochi, Bobcat Goldthwait, Steve Nuremberg, like some of these guys, some of these folks are missed. And it, it just felt even more embarrassing, even less funny of strips being made for these. Because people forget these were an assembly line, it got to a point, because they were coming out every year when they made from part one to part part six because part one's 84 84 then 85 86 87 88 and then 89 part six 89 and 89 was a bad year for well i was going to say sequels but you do have lethal weapon 2 and indiana jones 3 Last Crusade, Back to the Future 2, so there were good sequels, but there's a lot of bad ones. Halloween 5, Friday the 13th Part 8, Nominal Street Part 5. I swear there's another one I'm missing. Of course, this movie, but you have lame sequences like Marion Ramsey rapping with a group to get info. I guess it was they're trying to be funny or trying to be hip. And this kind of guy that like don't mind the song and citizens on patrol. That's fun in a goofy way here. It's just cringy. A lot of cringeworthy humor. Once while Tackleberry threatens a guy in a cab. You'll take the bus and like it, mister. And then it shows a grenade. I did chuckle at David Graff's look on his face when he's holding the grenade. But maybe that's what it is too, is that when he did to part six, 
it's become so routine and so repetitive that loses its charm. And I think that's another thing too, is that even if you're a fan of this franchise, it lost its charm by its repetitive repeat of jokes. There's only so many times you just say you just see almost the same thing over and over and over again. But of course, on the flip side, if it's done well, it's done well, and that's subjective. But here, it just okay. Here's Marion Ramsey once again doing this. Here's and like you said, sometimes some cadets have I swear less and less screen time as it goes on and when you start losing people that means the people there should be getting more screen time but instead they're giving more screen time to all these villains we don't give a shit about and this mastermind behind a silhouette again is he trying to go for fucking Dick Tracy movie or something look for the pink fucking panther but I mean like I said the plot City under siege, Lassard, Commandant gets framed. Of course, he didn't do it. And the cadets are going to try to prove it. And some of them do about the devalue of property. That's why all these thieving of buildings, because the property goes down. Then one night, the cadets all go out to try to stop everything going on this one night. Michael Winslow just stops. And does his fucking stand up for a random crowd during all this happening. Lear just stops, gets a mic, and does his stand up. I'm thinking, okay, yeah. I'll just go watch his stand up. Not literally to stop the film and just do the jokes he would do as stand up, talking like Donald Duck or talking like. I just. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Were they that desperate? Like, we're running out of ideas. And that's another thing. They were running out of ideas when you get to part six. Even Friday the 13th had ideas. <laughs> Think about that. Friday the 13th had more ideas. Hey, let's bring Jason back as a zombie. So he can punch people's hearts out. Let's give a sense of humor. So Jason throws a knife and it's like the James Bond thing. Friday 30 Part 6, Jason Lives. One of the better <laughs> entries in that series. This is the flip side of a Part 6. And yet again, Michael Winslow does the Kung Fu fight and the bad dubbing. But this, he makes himself, he puts a couple pieces of metal. And because he does some sound effects, the other guy thinks he's a fucking robot. I did. I know these films are goofy and silly, but even I'm going, really? This guy's going to think he's a fucking robot? Even I'm going, you gotta be shitting me britches, man. It's funny, there's a line where Bubba Smith is fighting this big guy, and they're punching each other. But then the guy makes a joke and Bubba Smith literally goes, fighting is one thing, but bad jokes is where I draw the line. You don't say, Mr. Bubba Smith. Bad jokes is where I draw the line. That should be the tagline for this fucking film. The finale, this is big chase with the, the, a Bigfoot monster truck and a bus. I'll say it was more interesting than the ending to part 5, let alone Mission to Moscow, which I'll get to that next. At least it takes place in the city, so there's a little bit of busy work and the environment and different vehicles where the monster truck and the bus and all this. At least it was not that badly staged compared to some of the others but you know, I just sit here and I go 
Oh, who is the mastermind? It was the mayor. Oh, I spoiled it. Wow. It was the mayor. Which, to be honest, there was a lot of choices. Because they're not going to have one of the stars be the mastermind. It's just not. This franchise is not that kind of franchise. So, it's either going to be that one guy that's in the other movies that's an authority figure, but we barely know anything about him. Or this brand new character, the mayor. I mean, it's not like you had a 50 50 chance. So, even as a mystery, it sucks. But I'm moving around because. I feel like if I move around, I'm going to get my brain kick-started to remember what the hell else happened in this movie. Because I don't remember what the hell else happened in this movie. I'm glad the fan is on. Because it cools my fucking temperature. So I don't get heated. So flames come my fucking ass. But you know, a fucking fire hole up the ass is better than these later Police Academy films. And sadly, they're not the worst comedies ever. I'll still take this shit over movie 43. Or going overboard. Or fucking Bucky Larson born to be a dipshit. Or just at least once in a while. It's like, hey, I like these guys because I follow them through a lot of films. You know, I still like Bubba Smith. I still like David Graff. May, re may they both rest in peace. But terrible script, lame mystery, no goot. It, you know what? It really does show Steve Grunenberg was a big part of this franchise, in my opinion. Because when he left... Which I don't blame them for. They really lost something. They really did. They really needed that center guy. It's like basketball. You need someone. That, that, that one star that really can be centered in. That one talent that can be centered in. Be their captain so to speak. But then we get to Police Academy 5, 6, and 7. It's like, who's the captain? Who is the actual star of the movie? Is it Matt McCoy? Well, he's not really treated as a star because it feels like he's barely in it from time to time. And other characters get a lot more screen time than him. Or importance. So, no, I don't know. Is Matt McCoy. G.W. Bailey? Well, he's the... Not the villain, but an antagonist. So you just sit there, you know. But I'll just end it there. It's already 16 minutes in. I got one more to go. And it's the worst one yet. If you've never seen Police Academy, watch the first four. And after that, it's your own risk. Later. Fucking... City under siege. Yeah, under siege in the fucking toilet.